moved down the coast, another sport that I, I was a kickboxer. Oh, so cool. I find the stuff that you say very fascinating with the combinations because I relate it back to kickboxing, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and, and strike, you know, when you call first strike, you know, that's very similar to what, and I'm finding that what you're saying, it goes across a lot of sports. It does. You know, it, like the numbers, like, and it, we, my son and I played a match today. He beat me seven, seven, five in the tiebreaker. He got five conversions. I got three. Ha <laughs> ha. And it was very interesting. And then the other day, I beat him 6-2, I got five, he got two. So the numbers aren't lying. And then, and then cause I'm, I'm sort of a quite analytical in that yeah. sense. So, sure. you know, getting, getting to what I've done, I made up this little match chart. And yeah. we, there you we, go. we charted Federer and Djokovic 19, you know, their final, the first set. I got sure. Jake to chart one and I, got, and I charted one. And like we worked out that there was, you know, what did we work out? Twelve points were in that two shot range. It, it, it's it's quite fascinating. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, then I look at in kickboxing in a sense, like what you're saying about your tennis court, where you can drill all day and you can do this, but it doesn't put you into the right mindset of playing a tournament and playing a match. And then I think about my kickboxing days, like we do shadow boxing, we do bag work, we do mirror work, but all that stuff that you did did not get you in the right mindset to fight in the ring. Yeah. That was a whole different kettle of fish. And unless you fought with the gloves on, in the ring, with the mouth guard, and suddenly when you hit that switch of you're not sparring anymore, this is full contact, yeah. it, it changed your whole mindset. It, it, it is amazing to me how the mindset shifts so quickly from this sort of relaxed mode. If you, I say relax because yeah. there's not, you know, when you're just drilling and there's yeah. no scoring, there's no score, yeah. there, there's, there are no real, like there may be targets, yep. there's no sequence. No. There's just one shot after another. Yeah. Then you 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 take a player and they're and you're in, and and they may get into a flow state. Yep. Absolutely, because yep, you're, you're being repetitive. Yep. And it's easy to get, and you can get into a flow. And and to me, that's what coaches and even the player can feed off of emotionally, because yep. it's a flow state. And and we know that when you're in a flow state. And what's a word synonymous with that is called play state. That's why I said seven on-court strategies to experience yeah, yeah. play state. Yeah, I've read a little bit. It produces a, a feeling and emotion where you feel and you perform your best, right? So, so that's why doing repetitive stuff, even, you know, maybe sparring in the gym, yep. um, you know, surfing a wave where you're not in a competition mode. Yep. yep. I've, you, I've done both. Yeah. You, you flow, right? Yeah. And, and you can go away from that practice feeling yeah. good about your game. Yeah, definitely. But, but when you start, when you start to keep score, yep. when you introduce a score, yep. there becomes winning and losing and something's on the line. This is Jake. Oh, he just hey, hey bud, what's up? <laughs> when you introduce competition, right, yep. by the score, and maybe you, uh, you put objectives out there like, okay, we can only play in this space for the first couple of shots, and then we can expand. This yeah. is what I'm working on now. Well, Where it's I, funny you say that. My last squad I did, I'm training kids. Like, Jake's in the squad. He's a bit young. He's only 10, but – there's not a lot of kids that can hit and he can actually hit quite well. So he wasn't at that training. And then I had two of them going and I said, right, you're only allowed to hit four hands after the, after the serve. Yes. And then, and then they played out their points and I was just getting them to play the seven, you know, I got a winner. And then I asked them, I said, how was that guys? And they go, 
that was extremely hard. Yes, <laughs> it is. And, and, then, and then they were saying, I kept placing the ball. And then one of the kids, Aiden, like he, he hits the ball quite well. And I said, Aiden, you know, because I'm walking around the courts and I'm coaching as they're in the, in the moment. I said, Aiden, you keep serving to his forehand. His forehand's his strength. Where does he hit it to you? To your backhand and you can't run around it. Right. So think about your serve. Think about where you're placing it. And then he lost the first one and then he won the second one because he, he went light bulb. Now I'm going to serve where I need to serve and I'm going to get that ball where I need it. Yeah. And it was really interesting. Yeah. Like, and, you know, Jake, Jake actually trained at Melbourne Park when he, was a, when he was eight and we were getting up at four in the morning. We we're about two hours from Melbourne. Wow. And we'd get on the court and he had a, a, a coach there at 7.30. He was on the court. He did an hour with him and then he did a squad for an hour and a half and then we'd come home. And, but the funniest thing is he did all that training and, you know, really good coach, you know, good technical coach. Yeah. He looked sure. great. Hit the ball. Hit, you know, he's hitting the ball on the spot. But when it came to tournaments, all that technique doesn't mean crap. <laughs> Well, it, it, there's a disconnect that happens when you, when you train technique without context. Yes. Right? So it's that, it's that trying to transform the practice court with context, right? Yes. And so what I've tr attempted to do is create games that put the player in the contextual competition mindset right yeah. so games like tsunami okay yeah. you win two points in a row you yeah. get a game yeah now now it's on the line for you you play a con the conversion point yeah if you can win that you win an extra game so there's a motivation yeah. to win that third point now yeah. if you lose that if the other players, what I call steals the conversion point away from you, yep. they begin the next game up one zero. Yeah. You know, so the serve switches. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. now the next point is on the line too, because yeah. if you lose that, the tsunami yeah. happens. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> that, that they win the next game and that it sort of suddenly comes upon you. Well, these are the experiences that competitors face at every age. Yeah, yeah. When they're playing, right, at, there's a weight, there's a weightiness to yep. the points, right? And, and yeah. so I kind of equate Tsunami to, and it, well, any, any of the con, uh, momentum games that you play, whether it's put, well, are you, you know, you're familiar with Deuces or Wild. Yeah. So uh, Deuces are Wild, after four points, if nobody wins two in a row, the surf yeah. switches and nobody wins the game. No one wins the game. But then I created Push, yep. where it's the same game, except after four points, the momentum score carries over. Yep. Right? And so yeah, 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 yeah. start the next game. And so there's a difference in those two games yeah. in that if you're serving – you've got to try to win two points in a row. Yeah. And if after four points, you can't do it, the serve switches. Switches. Or So you can only win the game if you're serving or returning. But yeah. in push, yeah. after the fourth point, if it's zero one, you could actually win one point serving and one point returning. returning yeah. and, and, that's, and that simulates like winning the last point of a game, like returning, and then having to come out and win the first point of the next game. And, and because, let's see, the first point of the game actually puts you in a position where your opponent has to win two in a row to be up on you. Yep. So, so the first point of the game is, is important in that aspect. Now, we, I've started, and you're going to see more of this. We're going to put this on the membership site. Yep. Um, we're starting, I'm starting to use the court and create – smaller margins or a yep. smaller court inside the court yep. yep. where you can you where you have to play the first two shots inside of that space yeah it's, it's, it's interesting you say that because like I'm quite creative in a sense so I've actually put ropes together yep like plated ropes and then I put a rope a meter off the baseline and we play deep 
and you only get a point if you get the ball in the deep. Yes. And you know what I mean? Like, and especially after return, like, sure. you know, like straight down the guts, I don't care, you know, straight at their feet, as sure. long as it's deep, you as know, and then it, deep. And it, keeps, it keeps you getting that, you know, I call it the, the rainbow, you know, that heavy ball that gets in and gets in going back. And y- yes. So many times you win so many points just playing that ball. Absolutely. Straight off the return. And that, and that was really the point of creating the games is you could take these games and expand in your creativity. And, and the best creativity is, is, the, is the creativity that looks, looks and makes you feel like you're playing a match. Yeah. Right? And so the biggest, the number one thing that I see is the difference between the way I design uh, the practice now and the and and maybe more than ten years ago because I've been doing this about I don't yeah know. I've been doing this ten years is that the player I can see the same emotions that I see when I watch them play a match come out in practice the frustration the the having to problem solve. Um, and I, I want those emotions to come out so that they can, the player can learn to deal with those emotions on the practice score. Yeah, experience it. Experience it on the practice score. And, and, and it's so the, so the, to me, the secret here is this two shot sequencing. Yep. At, so one, two reset, one, two reset, yep. and keep that sequencing in mind because it lines up with the data, right? Yeah.